Hey everybody, I hope you guys are having a wonderful time. Today we're going to discuss 10 words. One of them is a phrase that are very important for self writing. You can also use it for speaking, but we're going to focus mostly on writing today. Now, the words are only 10, but they have a huge impact on your exam. If you want to forward this for a few seconds, go ahead if you want to get into the words, but I'm going to tell you why first the words are important. Not only do you need complex words, which means every word you have, every vocab you have needs to be better. You know, good needs to be magnificent. Bad needs to be detrimental. Uh, huge needs to be ginormous, enormous. Something should be special about vocab. It should also be complex, which means every sentence should start with, not every sentence, sorry, at least two to three sentences in task one and task two should start with a word that breaks the sentence into two parts. We will get to that with examples later on. You also need a range of vocab. So if you don't have a range, let's say you just have nouns and verbs, which most people have, you're going to lose marks again. So today I'm going to give you 10 words that are easily usable in self pip writing. You can use them all the time. All right. And they're going to give you marks every time you use them. These are the things that when examiners see it goes check, 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 you get all the marks for vocabulary. Sometimes that is the only reason why people don't get a nine. They, st they get stuck at eight, even though with perfect grammar and writing. So let's get into it. The first word is the simplest one. Furthermore, okay, many variations of furthermore, it could be moreover. Also, likewise, the thing with furthermore, though, is it's a connector. And mostly people miss connectors in their writing. Where do you use it? Where is it the most effective? It is the most effective at the start of sentences, at the start of paragraphs, at the start of a new point that you're about to make. So most people don't even care and just start a new point. Some people care a little and they say and, but still none of those things give you marks for vocabulary. If you use furthermore, it's considered an advanced word, gives you mark for vocabulary and advanced vocabulary. So use that as your connector. Now, although great word to use. Now, the thing is, people don't use all though. All right, people think if you use although it's going to be a long sentence, which is why exactly you should use it. So although breaks the sentence into two parts, for example, although I need to go and get some groceries, comma, it is raining outside and I'll get wet. Now, this is a complex sentence because it's broken down into two parts. Whenever sentences are broken down into two parts, it is a good thing. Complex sentences give you marks for a vocab for the range. The more you use them, the better it is. We have a few more coming up later, but I'm going to say use although mostly maybe in your body paragraph two. So you can even use it in body part one. But use although not only will it show a contradiction, you would compare two different things, although something, something and then something, something else. It also makes the sentence complex, so you get marks in all directions. The next complex phrase is going to be based on, same thing. Now, in self writing, you are going to sometimes start a new sentence or a new paragraph based on the information on the previous paragraph. So it's very easy to say based on this point, based on this idea, based on this concept, comma, and you add something more. Simplest thing to do, and by doing this, again, it's based on something, comma, and then something else. What you're doing here is making a complex sentence, again, breaking down things into two parts. And once again, the whole point of this video is to give you words and phrases that are extremely usable in Salpip, and this based on can easily be used. So try using that. And uh, again, you get marks for complex sentences. Why shouldn't you do that? It's simple to do. Interestingly, at the start of this video, I mentioned uh, the range of vocab. So what we see as examiners, as teachers is People use nouns and verbs. You know, those are things like I went to the market, I bought food, simplest sentences that never give you any special marks, never push you over a nine. So what you need to do is put these adverbs extremely um, actively, quickly, slowly. Every Lee that you put counts towards a range of vocab because now you are giving the examiner more parts of speech. So you might start thinking in the exam which one or where you can put the adverb. Now, let me tell you, just say interestingly. One connector I already said was furthermore. Second connector is interestingly. Interestingly is a connector. And does the information after this word needs to be inter need to be interesting? Not really. Interestingly is such a great thing. You can put it anywhere. Like what do you find interesting? Maybe the examiner won't or vice versa, right? But whenever you want to make a point, you can just say interestingly, it's always interesting. Okay, anything you want to say, you can put it there. And the point the thing is, you get a Lee in there, you also get a connector, which is fancier than saying, and or also, you get marks again, in all directions. 
primarily, once again, it is not really an adverb, but it is a connector. Now, this is unique again. People don't use primarily. When do you see this being used? By usual candidates, by average candidates. Um, now here, a smart candidate is gonna use better connectors, right? Furthermore, moreover, likewise. But if you use a combination of furthermore, as I mentioned earlier, and you use primarily too, you're showing the examiner that you're not just looking at a website with a list of connectors, because that's where furthermore, likewise, and stuff will begin. But here you also have primarily, this is a creative, a way more unique connector, because it sounds different. And it's also, uh, it also has the word has the uh, thing Lee in it, which sounds appealing. It shows a range of vocab. And primarily mainly means more the more important thing to focus on is this. So when you go from one point to another, you can say primarily, it means that okay, mainly or more importantly, and then you explain the more important point. All right. Next one is senseless. Now we use senseless a lot in debates, you know, when you say that this opinion is senseless, this thing or whatever the point is on the other side, is senseless. Why do people use it in debates? And why does it sound so awesome in debates is because it is a very powerful word. When you call something stupid, it is offensive and slang, you cannot do that in self -pip. But basically by saying senseless, you are calling something or someone stupid. And you should because you want to give that emphasis that fluctuation of tone, which again contributes to the range of vocabulary. So by saying senseless, you are criticizing something, which also sounds very powerful. And it shows how confident you are in your writing, and that you have complete control, you can take a risky chance, you can make some risky words. And this is completely replaceable with stupid. So you cannot I mean, you shouldn't say stupid, you can replace stupid with senseless. And it, it's a powerful, it's an impactful word that you should definitely use. Now, when you're using this in task two, very simple to use it, you pick option A and option B, right? Uh, you say I support option A with these these reasons. And this point in option B is senseless. Just say that and explain that easiest thing to do. In task one, you may or may not be able to use it. But if you do, it's good. All right. Now I'm going to give you a kind of a connector, which could also be used as a conclusion. It is called conspicuously conspicuously means obviously. Now when you do your conclusion, instead of saying to conclude, you can say conspicuously. So it serves as a concluding word. It's like obviously, you know, based on everything I've said, this is what I'm going to finish off with. Um, you can also use it as a connector. If you want to put it in the middle of two points conspicuously and start your second point, you can do that it simply means obviously. But of course, we're not going to say obviously, we're going to say conspicuously because we want to give them fancier words get our marks. Therefore, now therefore is a concluding word, it is a little simpler than conspicuously. Why am I giving you a simpler one? Because again, it's good to have a combination. And it's also good to have backup words, you might have two conclusions in one task, you want to know conspicuously, therefore, there's also hence, but I like therefore it's a little big, it's a lot lengthier word, which means examiners like it, you know, everything complicated in the exam will give you marks. Go with therefore, if you have the chance, but you may, mainly would need two um, concluding words. So I would use conspicuously and therefore both are pretty good. First preference is conspicuously if you really need a second concluding word, therefore, before all else. Okay, this is something you may or may not be able to use everything on this uh, list you can use. But before all else, maybe or maybe not. But I would if I were you, I would force it, I would try to use it. Uh, mainly in my body one. Okay, so that simply means before all else means before everything else, I'm gonna say this thing. So when I start my first point of body one, what do most people do? On one hand, on the one hand, firstly, so basic, don't even like don't even try, say something better, before all else, and then talk about your point before all else, comma, I'll say this. All right. It's a very powerful way to start. Um, and again, you don't have to force yourself if you think you cannot do it. But if I were you, I would totally force myself because it is a pretty good phrase to use. The last thing I'm going to say is nevertheless, obviously, in task one or task two, you will 100% encounter a situation where you have to say but there's always a contradiction. Don't say but but is simple, you can say however, it's a little better. But what about nevertheless, nevertheless is way better. It is fancier, unique, low frequency. And that means it'll give you all the marks. So when you have a contradiction in between sentences or within a sentence, use nevertheless, don't say but or however, get more marks by being more fancy. And these 10 words are really going to help you some of them are phrases and uh, use them for writing and see if you can use them for speaking. I'm sure you can basically the more you use them, the better it is the more marks you get from all directions based on the examiner marking criteria. And if you're interested in learning more about how examiners mark and how this exam works, 
subscribe, like, and share. Also, check out the Instagram information of two of my good friends, Lynn and Mark. Lynn is amazing in creative designs. Any design you need, any poster, anything online you need, contact her. For photography needs, contact Mark. You'll see some of his work on his Instagram. They're right here in the description. Check them out. And again, subscribe if you liked it. Thank you. Take care.